Alrighty. Oh, on my way to work. Again. Which is a plus. So I figured I'd do a little review of uh, my, my other bike. 2019 BMW F850 GS. Uh, I've had this bike now for almost 4,000 miles. I haven't done much in it in the way of mods. You know, I, I got a link pipe and a, uh, an exhaust on there. Um, what else? Uh, I got some different hand guards from Wonderlick. And I bought a few uh, windscreens for it. One for everyday and one for touring. I have the everyday windscreen on there now. Anyway, now that I've finally gotten used to the bike, uh, I thought I'd put my, uh, my thoughts to paper, as it were, in a, uh, a video sense. Huh. Let's get to it. Alright, so 2019 BMW F850GS. So why did I buy this bike? This is my first touring slash adventure bike ever. Um, this is really my first bike outside of the sport bike or sport naked range I've ever owned. Um, you know, I got this bike because uh, we wanted to do more touring miles, my lady and myself. We wanted to ride, you know, uh, take weekend trips up north to maybe New Hampshire, Vermont, that area. And I wanted something more comfortable that uh, appealed to me. Um, and I gotta say, uh, and it's a completely stupid reason, but the reason why I, to I chose uh, this bike it was just because of the way I, lo I love it. it looked, you know, blah, blah, tongue tied. Um, I love the way the bike looks. I think it looks mean um, while still being very cool. Um, and then the second reason I got it was because of the electronics and all the amenities. I mean, it has cruise control, heated grips, uh, you know, the beautiful TFT display. Beautiful. I mean, this is easily the best display in all of motorcycles right now. Um, so yeah, I, I just, you know, and I never owned a BMW, so I thought, yeah, why not? I'll give it a shot, and I have to say I'm impressed. Um, I've had the bike now for about 36, 3,700 miles, um, and I have no complaints. The only issue that has cropped up recently is that the... Uh, the left bank valve cover has decided to start uh, seeping oil. Um, it's not a, a big leak, it's just seeping down and I have to wipe off the uh, the engine, yeah, what are you doing dude? I have to wipe off the engine casing um, like you know every couple of days but uh, I already have a, an appointment scheduled at the dealership to, to get that fixed under warranty. And you know that happens. I'm not going to fault BMW. These things are uh, they're mechanical, and you know stuff sometimes happens. I don't mind. <laughs> you know I would be more annoyed if uh, if this was my only bike. Thankfully, it's not my only bike because I'm I'm very blessed to have multiple bikes. So you know it's a, it's an inconvenience, but uh, it's not bad. So, what are some of the things that uh, took me a while to get used to with this bike? Let's see, first and foremost, uh, the weight. The weight really took me a long time to get used to. I I'm used to, like I said, sport bikes, which are lighter, obviously. And this took me quite a while to get used to. I'm um, just lifting it up off the, st the side stand. The, the overall heft and size of the bike in general is, is very different for me I'm I'm a small man I'm five foot six on a, a good day I have a 30 inch inseam I cannot flat foot or touch the ground on this bike which is not that big a deal for me I mean I've been riding over 20 years now so I can I'm used to not being able to flat foot 
just about any bike I've ever owned. So it's not that big a deal. Um, but uh, you know, uh, the size, the heft of it, I mean, just moving it around in the garage, the handlebars come up to my chest when I'm standing on the ground. Uh, all the pictures of me, like, standing next to the bike are ridiculous. It looks like I'm on a, <laughs> I'm like a, a little baby next to a, a normal-sized bike. So that, that took me a little while to get used to, but I'm, I'm pretty used to it now. Uh, the other thing that, that I, you know, took me a while to get used to, and I'm still not really used to it, is this 21-inch front wheel. Like, I don't ever plan to take this bike off-road. Uh, and any of the mods that I do to it are going to be with, the, with that fact in mind. Um, I just don't, I just don't feel like taking a very expensive bike off-road. Uh, and I'm not very experienced with off-road riding, so I would, I would destroy this bike if I took it off-road. Very quickly. Um, but the 21-inch front wheel, it just, it makes, it makes riding spiritedly or aggressively not fun. Um, because I, I don't know what the front end is doing. I have no feedback at all in corners of if the, the tire is gripping, how much more I have left. Um, you know, early on there were a couple rides when we were going up through, the, you know, uh, some of our, our regular twisty roads. There were two times in, in particular where I 100% lost the front end. You know, I got, I went into a corner, um, you know, uh, because the bike kind of, that's the other thing, the, the bike handles, it's agile, so it encourages you to start swinging it around, because the chassis tells you the bike can do it, you know, there's no, there's no, it's, it's not, it's not unsettled at all, no matter how you're throwing it into a corner, so you figure, all right, well, let's go, well, you do that, and then very quickly, the, the bike's like, yeah. All right, let's do it. And then the front goes, you know, nah, not so much. <laughs> so there were a couple times where I lost the front and just drifted way outside, mid-corner, because the front tire just had no grip at all. It was just pushing. The whole front end just pushed all the way out, which was pretty freaking scary. Um, so I, right after that happened, I was like, all right, I, I have to... I. I either have to change my riding style or I have to find a way to make the bike better in a corner. So um, I decided to go with plan B. Um, I ordered 17 inch wheels for the front and the back on this so I could put on some, some proper rubber and get a bigger contact patch out of the front. It's also going to lower the front uh, about three and a half inches without changing the uh, the suspension travel or anything. It's just going to, you know, since the uh, tire has a, uh, the 17 inch tire has a lower aspect ratio on top of a lower diameter, it's just going to shrink down that front, which is going to tip the bike forward a bit, put more of the weight on the front tire, make it a little more planted, which is what I want. Um, so that should help quite a bit in, uh, in getting, getting the wheel out of the corner. What I, what I might end up doing too eventually is getting a, a cartridge kit for the forks. Um, the rear shock, I have the dyna dy dy dynamic uh, ESA suspension and the rear shock is surprisingly good. Um, I, I was actually pretty amazed. The rear shock feels good when you change it, when you change the settings on it. Um, it works well. It works really well. That's the one thing I was worried about, and that, and that actually works very well. But the front end is just, it's, I don't want to say it's garbage. I'm sure off-road, it does very well. On-road, it's too soft. It's, it's way too soft for my type of riding. So I'll see how it feels when I change the uh, wheels, and then I'll change the, uh, if I have to, I'll change the, the internals on the fork. Um, you know, I don't like to make 
a lot of changes to my bikes all at once because then you never know what what modification made the biggest difference if that makes any sense if you do too much at once sometimes you can get lost in trying to tune things so i like to do one thing then ride it see how it feels get used to it and if, the, if it's good then it's good if not all right let me try something else ride it see how it feels get used to it you know rinse and repeat um that's the way i like to do things on my bikes so the 21 inch the 21 inch front is going to be gone um as far as other minuses that's it that's all i can think of on this bike where the weight and the front wheel for street riding it's i i love this bike it, you know for the purpose for for my purpose for the reason why i got it which is to cut the miles off of my thruxton keep out the mileage low there and have it for daily commuting and touring this bike is amazing it's extremely comfortable i got the low seat and the low seat for me is fine so i know some people complain the low seat is too it doesn't have enough cushion and it, it's too painful but for me i I don't know. I guess I have an iron ass because no seat is uncomfortable for me. I can just, I'll just get on and ride forever. Um, and I like the little extra, you know, inch or so of, uh, of seat height that it lowers. Um, but yeah, overall, man, I, I love the bike. I, I put an exhaust on it, a link pipe, which basically eliminates all, all the baffling in the exhaust system. Um, Outside of, I think there's one more catalytic converter before the link pipe. Um, but I mean, the bike is so loud now with just the uh, the, the MIVB Delta Race exhaust and the link pipe. I can't even imagine how much louder it would be with a full a full header back you know system. That would be insane. Um, Right now, if you don't have earplugs, the bike is on a longer trip. It'll it'll kill you. Um, but you know, and I always wear earplugs, so that's fine. And and I like the sound. It's you know, it really opens up the character of the engine. Like you know, the stock exhaust is so quiet that the the engine there's just no feeling there. You know, it's very I guess it's very German. There's no emotion there, uh, stock. But when you put an exhaust on this thing. Holy crap. It is night and day. Night and day. Let me uh let me rip it for you guys under the uh under this overpass so you can hear the exhaust a bit. <laughs> oh, oh, it's good stuff. But yeah. Love the bike. I love the bike. It's um I'm glad I got it. You know, my first BMW and I'm really impressed. The fit and finish of everything. I mean, even the little nuts and bolts say BMW on them, which is just pretty cool. Oh, here we go. Ah, oh, good stuff. Anyway, <laughs> it never gets old. Um, yeah, like I was saying, I, I love the bike. Um, I'm very surprised. I'm, I probably will end up buying another one. The only thing is, you know, my timing was kind of horrible because you know now they have the 900 uh, f900 xr if that was out when this was out i probably would have gotten the 900 xr because it, it, i wouldn't have to modify it so much you know it already has a 17 inch wheels um so that would have saved me some some time and money but you know it is what it is i ended up getting this um and i'm gonna make it work uh i love it i love it you know, I did I did put these uh, bar risers, these rocks bar risers, to move the bars back a little bit, um, just for more comfort, um, and they've worked out well. I relocated the GPS to up here. I don't know why they mount it here; it's horrible. I, I relocated it up top, um, but that's about it. Overall, very happy with the bike. No complaints. Um, you know, if anyone out there is looking for for the, something different, comfortable, um, you know, and and with a lot of tech built into it, because I'm, you know, admittedly I'm a gadget geek, so the cruise control. I never had a bike with cruise control. It's amazing. Um, the heated grips, amazing. 
I, you know, I, I have heated grips on my other bikes too, but it's inter everything is integrated so well. Um, the only thing that's annoying is the keyless ride. Um, and it's not as annoying as Ducati because it does have the keyless uh, gas tank with the Ducati. They have the keyless ignition, but then you still have to take the key out to put gas in the gas in the tank, which is kind of bleh. But with this, at least you don't have to do it, so it's more convenient. But it's it's for me that's overkill. Overall, love the bike. Would recommend it to anyone. The quick shifter and auto blipper, amazing very good um, but yeah guys uh, if you have any questions let me know put them in the comments below if not I'll see you later